The rate of killings, the rate of massacre in Karamoja has really reached a peak. You know, has reached a level whereby it should be everybody's concern. People think that me, strike machine, who makes noise in regards to whatever is happening in Karamoja, I'm a Karamojong. I'm not a Karamojong. I'm not in any way attached to a Karamojong background and all those stuff. But, but I reason like a common man. I don't want what happened to us in northern Uganda for over 20 years where we were, we were enclosed shield off the world and the rest of the country and were being massacred like in cold blood you don't know what happened in northern uganda for 20 years people were cooked hands were cut mouths were cut people families people were murdered people were roasted like nyamachoma you, you, you heard all those stories they were true they are all true you know the whole happened in northern uganda I, I i don't want that to happen to karamojongs when some of us are looking and watching this happen you know we will not keep quiet we always keep making noise come and see the education sector education in Karamoja, how it's really moving. Come and see the health institutions in Karamoja and see how it's moving. Come and see the water supply system. You, you find the Karamojongs are drinking this water which has uh, collected in, in pot, in, in olds, which could have been, which were made by graders while constructing Maram roads. Not Tamak road, but Maram roads. An area which generates almost 90, 98% of the gold that is exported out of Uganda is, that, is, is in that kind of condition. Karamoja has 21 duly elected members of parliament. And all these members of parliament are from the NRM, the, they are in the ruling party. They have not made any, any single effort. Most of them are quiet. The other time, Nandut was in state saying, oh, there is no killings in Karamoja. Oh, there is no... Karamojongs, without Robert Chagulanyi Center and the National Unity Platform, do you know how many, how many Karamojongs would have died from anger? in the previous year and do you think anger has disappeared if other parts of uganda are complaining of anger what should the karamojongs now say eh? this parliament the, the the most useless parliament we have ever had in our time is this parliament the most useless parliament i must say is the most useless parliament is the worst parliament very diversionary they've been majoring on minor issues and marginalizing the major issues that affect common men you just look for instance the most recent one censoring namugaza was a topic of discussion for nearly two weeks for nearly a month even and all members of parliament because museveni gave that woman excessive power members of parliament fear her. you saw that day when they were censoring namugaza yesterday how the house was full and everybody had to vote using the microphone on audio, not by ballot, secret ballot, but physically so that their faces are seen. They say, people fear that. Everybody had to vote against Namugansa, even if they didn't believe that Namugansa was on the wrong. You know, that is what Parliament of Uganda is discussing. Eh? You come to our mainstream media. The worst, let me tell you, the, one of the main factors as to why today Uganda's problems will never be solved, or they, 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 they've seemed to be more persistent are the media houses. Take, for instance, the NBS, propagandizing things, posting nonsense. The other time they were talking about Mozi. You, you just see the quality of journalism that we have in Uganda and you compare with the quality of journalism we have in Kenya. In Kenya, our neighbor here. Yeah? In Tanzania, just our neighbor here. Let's first look at our neighbor, neighboring countries. You see the quality of journalism that these people have and you compare with that of Uganda. You see, we are in stone age time, almost. That very same parliament has been a very big disappointment to us. It has been a very, very big nightmare to us. Because if these things here continue, if the parliament which was supposed... You, you really ask yourself, eh? you wonder what, what country we are in. And now, media is diversionary, leaders are diversionary, the parliament which was supposed to be do oversight of certain things is... Di there was a time in 2014 when I was a student leader at Makere University. Government of Uganda, the, the Uganda National Bureau Standard, confiscated at least around, around 500,000 lifeguard condoms. 500,000 lifeguard condoms. Then the owners of the, 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 the condoms, the, the people who purchased it, went through a back door and bribed some of the members of the Uganda National Bureau of Standards. Then that condoms was released to them and they injected it into the society. Then later, one year later, or six months later, Ministry of Health came and stated, made a statement on media that all those ones, all those citizens of Uganda who used the lifeguard condoms between this time and this time here, please go and check out 
up for your for HIV because the condoms that were that were pumped into the public were perforated. That is what they stated that the condoms were perforated. Now, who is supposed to protect the common man who is illiterate out there who doesn't understand that condoms of anonymous stuff? Who, who is supposed to protect the common man? These are things that happened, and Parliament kept quiet on it, and nobody did anything about it. You know, the the perpetrators are walking very free. So nobody got any explanation. And this one continues to happen in Uganda throughout, throughout, throughout. And we are not talking. Eh? When somebody begins talking, you hear you're threatened. This madness here must stop. Museveni has grown on the things he owns the country. Or he thinks he has the country at, uh, under control. He has pressed us to the wall and he's still pressing us to the wall. One day, when we surface or when we resurface, especially when we do it desperately as citizens, he will never like what he will see that particular day. And it might, it might be a very, the very day he will live to remember wherever he will go to after this life or wherever he will run to. Because things are not going to be the same. We are tired of this nonsense. You know, we give you taxpayers money. We pay taxes. We do what you, 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 you're using taxes to do patronage, to do stupid things. Eh? We've been asking you that, you know, health is everybody's mandate, is everybody's, everybody's right. Bring those hospitals that you run abroad with your officials to, for treatment to here in Uganda so that we can get treatment also. Because with a poor man or a rich man, everybody deserves to live. Bring those hospitals here in Uganda so that we can also get good medical services you do not want. Instead, you fly abroad for treatment. We say you bring those schools that you run that you take your children abroad to to study so that we can also get good quality education you you don't want these things will stop and must stop with the